not a spring chick. And yes, we are. Okay, it's our cans daily from May 23rd. Cans is still going on until the 26th. Yeah, but it's really winding down. You I know, know everybody's getting ready to go to the Grand Prix. Yeah, that, because it starts, the, it starts, actually it starts, all the stuff is going on right now, mm -hmm. so they got to be going, but they, the quote of the day. Is by Robert Redford himself. I believe in the value of silence in film and life, as there's a lot of talk around, sometimes too much. Oh, well, yeah, because Robert Redford, I've, I've actually, put it this way, I've known Mr. Redford since he was Bobby and he did The Untouchables, which is like... That's a very long time. Over 50-some years ago, folks. Here we've got the people that are in a, are there today, which is basically going down a little bit, so. Okay, most, um, Mar Marissa Berenson. I don't even know who she is. She used to be a model, she's a great big actress. Uh, Jane Campion, Dolores Chaplin, because they're doing something for the Chaplins. Yeah, and uh, John Hurt, who's there now. Oh, Matt Damon and Brian De Palma are still there. Well, yeah, Lord well, they're pushing a movie that nobody wants. And Michael Douglas, the Behind the Candelabra. And yeah, we're just telling John Hurt is there now. Oh, Jerry Lewis came back? But yeah, well, no, they debuted his movie today. Oh, because he was there earlier. And then he came back. Okay. Well, because he, he had to go, I think he went to things in Paris because mm -hmm. they're honoring him as uh, another thing there. And Kevin Pollock is there now, though. Kevin Pollock. Rob Lowe is still there. Yeah. A lot of the people that were still, they're there because they're Kristen movies. Scott Thomas. These are movies that are in competition and they're still there. We're just trying oh. to tell us some people that weren't. Now we got the, um, very, we got a tribute to Jerry Lewis, 87 years old and almost as many roles. I mean, oh. Actually, I didn't work with Jerry Lewis. I worked with Martin and Lewis. There's a difference. Who's Martin? That's Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Ah. And it was an entirely different situation. I think I did. I was in Way Out West with that, which was uh, well Western. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So but um, I get to ride a horse. Mm. But um, Jerry Lewis is the the tireless Joker, a man with many hats, actor, screenwriter, producer, did a film legend, and celebrated uh, at the Cannes Film Festival, which is funny, he's also got a movie in competition, folks. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh. Um, so put away his clown's nose and slipped into the skin of Max Rose, an 87-year-old jazz pianist. For years of efforts for the sake of his marriage, he flosses, what do you mean flosses his wife? Yeah. He's he loses a, his wife. Oh, he loses. Oh. Okay, this is what happens when there's little dots on your screen. I know. Um, that's all right. I'm not wearing glasses today either, so. And the thing, and the thing she leaves behind, Max finds a private letter. Eva was apparently in love with someone else. Yeah, that's always the good thing to find out when your wife dies. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, he's, he, uh, he's all, Max was also encountered between a newcomer in the film world, Dan York and Jerry Lewis, 87. Oh, God, I had no idea Jerry Lewis was directing on the Martin Lewis movie, folks, so. The contact with Lewis was that I didn't even, I, I didn't ever get behind the camera. That was the contract. <laughs> yeah, so. What? Well, Daniel Noah? Yeah, he was not, he did not mess with the other guy's film. That, otherwise, it was oh. no Lewis in the movie. Um, they said, Jerry Lewis is the incarnation of universal spirit that Daniel Lewis wanted to give his film. Family, marriage, parenthood, <clears throat> Max Rose explores all these themes. The film reminds us that there is no greater success than love. Um, we got, you know, basically, it's the, Jerry Lewis said it's the first role that he's ever accepted so quickly. Well, yeah, because he hadn't had a great dramatic role in, in 20 years, I don't think. Um. So, uh, but, uh, it's a special screening as well. Film. It's a special screening, so it's not in competition, but it's in competition with Robert Redford for the Academy Award, folks. Mm. Yeah, and here's the problem. Redford Jerry got, Lewis or yeah. Robert Redford? Yeah, because there's two senior citizens Gotta be Duke and get out. One well, and of part of it is Jerry Lewis hasn't been in anything for years. Yeah, but Lewis has really got a big history of humanitarian work, just like. Uh, and remember that uh, uh, I think uh, Redford's 77, Lewis is 87, and Lewis is not likely to be around much longer in his ill health. No, so. that's part of it. So, um, uh, Lewis, uh, tell how you acted and received the script. I contacted Daniel Noah immediately and told his and told him that I would be at the studio the next day. It is the best script I've had the chance to read in 40 years. And it's the first time I've accepted a role so quickly. Best script in 40 years. Yeah, well, wow. it, you said it's a tribute to old people. I take everything I've done since I turned 60 and put it in a suitcase before going to meet Daniel Lewis. I tried to show the beauty of the relationship that unites these people. Basically, it was Jerry Lewis trying to take control again. He brought over everything so the guy would know what it was like being 60. 
Mm. Here's the problem is young people don't have a clue. Barack Obama, for instance, doesn't have a clue what it's like to be a senior citizen. Well, because he's not a senior citizen. I know, and uh, nobody can write. It's just like I cannot write about what 18-year-olds uh, are going through right now because it's not like what I did, you know, in the 19... Mm. I mean, 19... Actually, okay, when you were 18. And that was a long time ago. Okay. So Jerry Lewis on the script, when you come across a script of this caliber in your lifetime, it changes the chemistry of your physiology and your behavior starts to be influenced by the atmosphere of the script. Ooh. Um, it's difficult to not dive into the character on 100%. Daniel Noah had set down in black and white what he has in his heart. Well, remember, Jerry Lewis is, um, <clears throat> was a dramatic actor, folks, and uh, this is not the first time that he's done a great, I think he was in a Robert Redford movie with The King of Comedy, mm. which is a big dramatic thing, but now we got one, you know, that both of us have met now, though, which is Alexander Payne. In competition, Alexander Payne returns home. Following the exotic... What's it called? Exotic? The exotic because it was in Hawaii. It was the, it was, yeah, part we, of it is I didn't ever think of that as being exotic. It's yeah, Hawaii. We, we had the fortune of basically going to a screening and talking to all these people on that one, which is a neat thing. Yeah. So. so Hawaii was a character in there. So here in Nebraska is something of a return home for Alexander Payne. The winner of an Oscar in 2011, a member of the Nanny Murray jury last year, the director is once again in competition 11 years after About Schmidt, this time to present a road movie with a comic twist, Destination, His Native Land. And time to hit the road, Woody Grant has won the jackpot $1 million in the lottery that must be collected in the plains of Nebraska. And so the alcoholic father leaves Montana with one of his sons, but the journey isn't exactly a peaceful one. As the miles past, family and old acquaintances make their appearance, and the father's past resurfaces. You know, he's Bruce Dern, so you can guess what time. <laughs> Bruce Dern. I grew up, with, I, I went, we were both young, and he was a psycho all the time. Folks. Is that one of those things when you win the lottery and everybody knows about it? All these people come out of the woodwork. Yeah, actually, Bruce Dern is really a nice right. guy. I mean, I, I've known, I met Bruce Dern 50 plus years ago, so. Of course, that's what I've heard. I'd love the chance to experience it. <laughs> right? yeah, the Plains of Nebraska have also inspired Alexander Payne, starting with his first feature film, Citizen Ruth. The story of a pregnant drug addict, because he's from the Midwest, folks. So is George Clooney, whether people realize it or not. He is? Yeah. They were about, uh, they were, I think, I think Ohio was Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, they were also located for Schmidt, for about Schmidt, presented in Kansas in 202 and marked by Jack Nicholson's performance. While his 1999 film election was shot in Omaha, his native town. See? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, Alexander Payne attended a press conference this morning for Nebraska, his black and white road movie, which is presented today in competition, to answer the question for the journalist. The director was accompanied by Bruce Dern, Will Forty, which now we know what he was there for. Yeah, Will Forty was there. As well as the producers, Ron Yermy and Alec. Angel Macu. Angel Mc. Is she was, is he related to? I uh, think she's a. Greg Ang Angel Mc. Oh, you know what? No, I think it's no. It's from Big Fish. No, yeah. And Moulin yeah, Rouge. Yeah, you know, and you know, now we can't. We know. And Star Wars. Uh, we, we've actually met him. We oh met no, him. I'm thinking of someone. I'm thinking no, of Evan. No, the Evan. 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 Evan yeah, we, yeah. We've met him, folks. Okay. We, we have met him. Mm -hmm. So, Alexander Payne on the origins of the film. Make a film at a given moment in time. I got the screenplay about nine years ago, and it's a story that's both funny and sad, a bit like life. The writer had really lived what happens in the story, so he's describing his personal experience. The film from the Depression era, which is why I wanted to make it in black and white. Mm -hmm. What is this? Everybody's trying to do black and white after the artist? Because it's cheaper. You can shoot, okay, here's the problem is, we have a 3D camera sitting in front of us. I can flip that to 2, I can flip it to 2D in black and white if yeah, I want. Yeah, but you would think that they would make it in color and then change it to black and white. No, because it probably is, it's probably shot with a color, it's shot, my guess is digital because it's cheaper nowadays. Mm -hmm. They're using a DSLR, most of the people, actually we do know what they use because we were talking to him. He told us exactly the equipment he was using. Mm -hmm. He carries his own crew with him all the time. They do commercial, commercial work. And they're basically, they're, they're able to navigate on a very slim budget with the equipment that they already own. Right, because they already own the equipment, they already used, know how each other works. Yeah, there's a Bruce Dern, no, there's a difference between see, asking an actor to do something and telling him. Paying as closely as the different takes and ask you to change and develop things as they progress. It wasn't like Hitchcock, one day Hitchcock took me and told you, I took you, uh, took you on because I think you're funny. I got 15 perfect takes here, but none of them are funny. Alexander Payne is there for you. He has a whole team in place to help you relax 
because that's what he does. He, he keeps the same people, surrounds himself with people he knows and knows how he works. But we also told Which is one of the reasons he keeps coming up in all of these films. Yeah, he, uh, basically what it was is, uh, we understand Payne is an actor's director. Mm -hmm. So George Clooney, basically that's what George Clooney referred to, he's an actor's director. Mm -hmm. Because he basically uh, knows what the actors want and then tries to go with it. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess he's, the, he, if they ad lib, yeah. Yeah. He, he permits that living would be my guess. He permits it. He permits, okay, for instance, there's a scene in The Descendants where George, where George Clooney can't be running like a duck. I mean, you know, with his, you know, with his he's got flip flops off and, and they, you know, like he, <laughs> which is basically, I know. That was, that was George Clooney's thing because George Clooney basically is not really an athlete, but that was really funny seeing him run down the street by people. I, you know, <laughs> so. But um, the father-son relation in the film is explained by Alexander Payne. The father wants to offer his elderly fa father a moment of dignity. My parents are getting on, and it's a question that affects me because I also like to grow old with complete dignity. Old age can diminish us and make us lose our dignity. We have to hold on to it. See, I'm in the film business. <laughs> you basically get rid of that part. <laughs> I was just old when I lost mm -hmm. that. So, but um, June Squab. Uh, about her character. The marvelous thing about this character is that she hides nothing. She says whatever her mind. And that's how she's always lived. So that's it's, it's going to be. We'll probably get an. In, I hope we'll more than likely get an invite, and then I'll go see if I can embarrass Bruce Dern. What? Why would you want to do that? I, I was there in, in one of his really early bad westerns when he said, uh, "I do remember Bruce. How do you get on this damn thing?" <laughs> oh, talking about a horse. <laughs> He never been on a horse, so, he, <laughs> so and you can guess how the people that knew what they were doing helped him. Will you get on from this side all the time? So, no, no, no. But um, uh, you know, this is you know, the material's got to get shorter and shorter every day, folks, because it's, well, uh, we are definitely going into the home stretch. Yeah, I'm trying to give you things from American audiences, Americans that they understand. I don't know about. The one last of the Rick movie, I don't think we're going to hear much about it because I don't think they have a press conference for blood ties. Oh, yeah, there was... Um, it was a, somewhat of a huge disaster last night. And this was the sequel... Actually, this morning. The sequel to Drive. Yeah. So, yeah. People love Drive. They said they're going to hate blood ties. So I guess until tomorrow, this is okay. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And for more information... You can go to www.mbnnewsvideoweb.com on the net or www.travelsuite.com on the net. And the information is similar but not exactly alike on both sites. And wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. Come, yes, friend us and like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, yeah, on Monty Bubbles or the Travel Suite. Um, but most of all, go to our website www.mbnnewsvideo.com and travelsuite.com because I'm, I'm repeating over again, so I'm, I'm, I know so my tongue is tied. We we'll just put it at the bottom. Yeah. That makes it easier, right? <laughs> yeah. There we go. So happy cans 2013.